Hi everyone, welcome back. We continue on this list and today we are going to learn about DCT function which stands for discrete cosine transform. Also we are going to learn about the opposite of DCT function which is IDCT function standing for inverse discrete cosine transform. So we are going to learn these two functions today. Uh, why we need DCT function? It's going to help us to switch the domains. For example, in image processing, most of the times we are working on a space domain. But in some cases we need to go back to the frequency domain so the ct function is gonna uh, convert space domain to the frequency domain we can say why we need frequency domain in uh, for image compression which is meaning uh, decreasing the size of an image we can say also of course image compression comes with data loss so we are gonna lose data of an image also we can lose some details but also we can decrease the size of an image so there is a um, there is a trade-off between these two image compression and uh, data loss so DCT help us uh, to back to the frequency domain by getting to the frequency domain we can uh, make image compression which we are gonna also make an example in the code part also okay also for some sub processes in frequency working in frequency domain make you uh, faster so you increase the speed of some processes also we can uh, use DCT function for that purposes yeah these are some advantages these are some usage kind yeah in the OpenCV function is uh, simple usage you are just need to give the input image also it's gonna give you the destination image also there are some formulas which is I'm gonna skip I'm not also familiar with these formulas who are interested with this they can go deep into but uh, I'm just gonna uh, focus on the purpose and how it's working so we will see the results we will uh, see the purposes so I am I will skip these things okay um, also one thing maybe we need to keep in mind you need to give full out type of images uh, also it should be single channel image even here it's not written but we are gonna see in the code parts is needed single channel input image okay then it's gonna give us the destination image uh, this is ID city why we need this one at the end of your uh, processes with the frequency domain you if you are done maybe most of the times you need to back to the space domain so you need to uh, use ID city function so you can switch the domains again at the end okay let's back to the code part this is a uh, simple code I'm not yet started um, a simple Lena image I'm running let's see okay this is Lena image I'm gonna use for this uh, DCT function so I'm gonna use this example um, first of all what we said uh, we need some kind of image image types so let's define them first of all we need a uh, image float for input because it should be image float type of this is uh, not float unsigned chart type this is um, also after that we are gonna need some DCT image we are gonna need IDCT image also maybe at the end we need output okay um, maybe one more window which is let's say maybe output and we can start with converting image to the float type how to do that we already learned image.convert to and the input is gonna be the image and output is gonna be the sorry uh, input is already in here we need to give the output image float and the other one is gonna be cv32 float type so now we get our float type of image after that we can call the dct function Im input is gonna be the output of this one which is the image float and the destination is gonna be the dct image so this is gonna give an error and this is gonna crush this code because as i said this is three channel image but it's needed one channel image so in here we are gonna get an error so as you can see channel one channel one so dct is required one channel images but in the documentation it's not written oh so we need to read this image as let's say im read as grayscale image so now this is one channel and this code is gonna work now without an error okay so we get this dct image so but we cannot visualize this of course because this is in the float type 
but just to see how it looks like we can convert it to the uh, chart type so we can use with imshow let's define in here out sorry and out how to do that how to convert flood to do chart type is easy actually we already learned about this function which is convert scale absolute function and here you need to give the um the input dct which is and after that the output maybe so this gonna convert this flood to do between 0 and 255 so we are gonna able to see how it looks like okay yeah this is the dct output of course this is not representing the exact flood numbers but it looks like this you can uh, remember this is the normal image or lena image input so now at the beginning we talk about the domains right space domain and the frequency domain as you can see just understand this is the space domain and this is the frequency domain just for um maybe different language even these are the same data in the behind is they are keeping the same data but they are different representation we can say maybe you can uh, understand as different languages this is german language this is spanish language let's say so these are uh, different domains but they are the same data okay of course this is meaning not a meaningful for now so we get the dct image how to back if you directly use the uh, idct image i mean idct function which is gonna be input to dct image and output is gonna be the idct image so if you put this idct image to the convert scale apps and at the end you are gonna get the same image these are two and both are the same lena image with all the pixel values because we did no uh, processes after dct function so we didn't do anything with this we directly inverted to inverted that one so after getting dct image sometimes you can make some uh, different functions you can use that for different purposes so i want to make an example with uh, image compression how it looks like how to do that actually if you um, may or, if you uh, see this the pixel elements element values you are gonna see these are we are calling coefficients pixel values also we call coefficients and these coefficients can be in different values from 0 to let's say 10,000 so which is close to the zero uh, means those elements is the details is the details of the image you can understand in that way so in some cases which is close to the zero you can eliminate it by equalizing to the zero so in that case you will uh, lose some details but the most of the critical part of the image is gonna stay let's make with an example and just define a threshold value at the beginning and let's start with the 50 and after that all i need to check each uh, pixel value of this dct image dct image dot rows okay also i need to check for each columns j this is gonna be dct image dot columns and yeah now inside this scope i'm able to get each pixel values and here i'm gonna check with an if case of course some values of this can be negative so i need to consider that one also negative and the high values is also some critical part so i need to consider it also so i'm gonna standard library absolute value so now i need to get the ct image dot add since the elements is flood type and the coordinates i and the j which is representing x and y axis and if this is smaller than threshold value equalize that details into the zero which is just copy this and this one and zero so um okay 
So this DCT image at the end gonna be inverted again. So we are gonna see at the end. So we can run this function, uh, this code. So you see, this was input and now output do is this one. Still you see a Lena image, but with bad quality maybe we can go because we uh, eliminated some details. So it looks like little blur image, not a good qualified image. This is the uh, output. But if you decrease this one, you see this is almost the same image. But, uh, but in the reality, if you go into the detail, maybe pixel by pixel, you are gonna see some uh, pixel values in this one uh, disappeared, I mean changed. So this with the input image. Uh, maybe to understand the difference, even this is small, maybe we can uh, write this image into a directory. For example, this is the input. Let's call imwrite function. Okay, and all I need to write a new Lena image. Lena1 and this is gonna be the image. Okay, and at the end the new Lena image is just gonna be the out. So I'm gonna also imwrite that one to the directory. Let's run the code. Okay, let's open the folder. Now let's check the, the let's check the sizes. In here you see this is 159 kilobyte. And let's check this one. This is 160 kilobyte. Why this is bigger than the first one? Maybe this is uh, the low value. Let's little increase that one. I expect uh, the second one is the lowest value. Okay, this is same. Yeah, this is now the little less than the first one. Uh, so this is, uh, maybe I'm making this uh, logic little wrong, but I believe it's correct also. Maybe this is cause of PNG. Let's make JPEG and let's see difference again. Let's see the size, 82 and this should be smaller, 58, yeah, now bigger uh, difference so what we did just by eliminating some details in the image um, by the way this each element we are calling in the frequency domain as coefficients we just eliminated them by equalizing to the zero so other details the most important details are staying which is bigger than the 50 but uh, yeah so when you use that image the, with the small size but losing uh, data much at the end also in some cases yeah so basically we use DCT to switch the domains also we use that for image compression we use that some uh, increasing the speed of some functions because we are converting it to the high frequency domain so these are the main purposes of DCT function in image processing uh, yeah, all for this video I think I'm done. See you in the next videos.